commentaries talk about three levels of concentration, and they have their ways of explaining it. But my favorite way of explaining the three levels is something I heard in a Dharma talk in Thailand one time. The first level, momentary concentration, is the kind of concentration that can't withstand pain. It runs into pain and it jumps off, goes someplace else. The second level, threshold or neighborhood concentration, can withstand pain, but it gets lost in pleasure, it begins to blur out. And fixed penetration is a level of concentration that can withstand both pleasure and pain, not be swayed by either one. That's where we're aiming in our concentration practice, is to get that level of fixed penetration, where when pain comes it doesn't dislodge the mind. When pleasure comes it doesn't make you blur out. So keep that in the back of your mind. The pleasure and pain are the big issues we've got to deal with in learning how to get the mind to settle down. And make sure you understand the difference between pain and suffering. We had that chant just now, those who don't discern suffering, and on the face of it would sound kind of strange. Everybody has experience with suffering of one kind or another, but we don't dis distinguish the difference between pain and suffering, so we don't really discern what, where the actual suffering lies. We have a very strange relationship with pain, which is what makes us suffer. On the one hand, we're hardwired to notice it. As soon as there's the slightest pain in any part of the body, the mind goes running right there. And then it runs into the pain and it jumps off because it doesn't like being with the pain. So it's dancing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If we could take a video of the mind, that's what we could see. It's dancing back and forth. And if there wasn't so much suffering involved, it would be comical. We don't like it, and yet we keep going back. And once we hit there, we have to jump off again. And the way to deal with it is first to learn to stay away from it. Give yourself something else to focus on. And this is one of the typical techniques of the world. If something's really bothering you, you, you don't know what to do about it, you distract yourself. And although it may seem like a ostrich with its head in the sand approach to pain, it's, it's actually the first step that you've got to learn as you're sitting here is how not to focus on the pain. Focus on the breath instead. Give yourself a pep talk on how important it is to be with the breath, how much you can learn about the energy flow on the body, and how good it's going to be, because eventually you're going to use the breath as one of the tools for dealing with the pain. Remind yourself of how important it is to have a good, solid basis when you're going to look at the pain, and a good place to retreat to if dealing with the pain starts getting too difficult. So there's lots of good reasons for wanting to be with a breath. And then you can confirm that reasoning by actually exploring what the breath can do for you. Look at it. Try to be as sensitive as possible to what the breathing can do for you the different ways you feel the breath energy in the body, have the different rhythms of breathing have an effect on the body, the, the difference in depth, what does that do to your experience of the body? There's lots to explore here. And the less you think about simply forcing yourself to be with the breath and think more in terms of exploring the breath, the easier you find it to be, become absorbed simply in this process of breathing so that you don't have to jump to the pain. You have another place to go, some, a counterbalancing weight that you can hold on to that keeps you from getting sucked into that black hole of the pain. And the longer and longer and longer you find you can stay away from the pain, while at the same time you're exploring the breath and learning to soften up the feelings of tension in different parts of the body. There comes a point where you can finally turn that breath and spread it to the pain. The best way to do this is to stay focused on your 
center for the breathing. And just think of the relaxing, dissolving energy of the breath spreading out in that direction of the pain. Don't go running to the pain just yet. Stay with your center. And as you dissolve the tension in this part of the body, that part of the body, you get so you can dissolve the tension around the pain. Go past the pain. Because that begins to soften up the pain, and you find that many times that takes care of a lot of the pain right there. And what's left after that is something else you've got to look into more deeply. But the first step is to loosen up your tightness and tension around the pain. One of the reasons that pain seems to be so solid and imposing is that we put up a solid wall around it. And so when we jump to the pain, that's what we run into, is we run into that solid wall. So the pain itself seems solid. But when we learn to soften up around the pain, loosen up around the pain, when the time comes to actually look at the pain, you begin to see more clearly the actual nature of the pain. You begin to discern the pain for what it is. In other words, it's constantly moving around, constantly shifting, constantly shaving, cha changing. Changing shape, changing intensity. If you were to look at the one point where the pain is most intense, you would find that it jumps around. That teaches you some important lessons about the pain. That it's not the solid thing you thought it was. This is one of our big problems in life, is that we don't really understand pleasure and pain. We have lots of preconceived notions about it, and we live in terms of our preconceived notions. Yet the actual experience of pleasure and pain is something very different from our conceptions, our caricatures. And seeing through those caricatures allows us to deal more effectively with the pain. You find that the pain becomes a lot less threatening. You can look at it from a position of strength, position of equanimity. Because after all, you've got that comfortable breathing you can go back to at any time. And you've worked through the pain as much as you can. And that's what pulls you out of the, or doesn't pull you, it brings you from the first level of concentration into the second one, where you're able to just be there with the pain and not feel so threatened by it. The problem here sometimes, though, is that once things start getting comfortable, you begin to blur out with that sense of comfort. This is called not being skilled with regard to the body. As the body here is our focus, the breath. Not only the in and out breath, but the breath sensations running throughout the body. For many times when that those bodily sensations start giving rise to feelings of pleasure, we drop the focus on the body and focus instead on the pleasure, which is a pretty blurry thing. And our mind tends to blur out along with it. So once you do get to this point where you feel relatively at ease with the pain, you have to be very, very mindful of the body. Keep your attention focused on the breath. See that the, the breathing sensations and the sort of flickering sensations of pleasure around the breath are two separate things. And you can maximize the pleasure, you can spread the pleasure throughout the body, but don't lose your focus on the breath. There are various ways of doing this. You can focus on the breath in the different parts of the body, try to get as precise as possible. You know, the breath in your first joint of your little toe, the breath in the first joint of your second toe. Just go through the body very, very precisely that way. Or just simply ask yourself, where is my head right now? Where are my hands? Where are my arms? Try to connect everything. so that mindfulness stays properly established, stays firmly focused on the body. And the funny thing is that in doing this, you actually get a lot more pleasure out of it. If you could just go jumping for that first little bit of pleasure and you blur out, it's not that intense, it's not all that satisfying. You come out of a meditation session like that and you say, where was I? You've been in delusion concentration. But if you stay focused on the breath, 
to the really precise sensations of the breathing. You find that the pleasure grows and grows and grows, and sometimes it gets to the point where the, the rapture that comes from this is so intense it gets unpleasant. That's when you focus in on a more refined level just to stay with the, with the pleasure without getting involved in the rapture. But it's that focus on the breath that, may, that protects you, that keeps your concentration more and more solid. Because after all, pleasure, rapture, these are things that come and go. It's like the wind. If you don't want to get blown away by the wind, you've got to hold on tight. So you hold on to the section of the sensation of the body. Again, not this with a sense of tensing up to hold, but simply keeping your mindfulness very well focused, keeping your alertness very well focused there on the sensation of the body, sensation of the breath, the warmth, the coolness, the heaviness, the movement in the body. Stay focused on those things without losing your focus and moving off to the sense of pleasure. This way, ultimately, as you work through the sensation of breathing, as it gets more and more refined, it finally gets to a point where it's filling the body and then it stops. It's not that you stop breathing, but there's a sense of stillness in the breath energy that fills the whole body. You're getting all the oxygen you need coming in and out the skin. As your brain activities have begun to settle down, so you're, losing, you're using a lot less oxygen. That's our big oxygen user in the body, the brain. So this allows you to finally get to that point of fixed penetration where you're not swayed by the pain, you're not deluded by the pleasure, or led astray by the pleasure. You can withstand them both in a good state of equanimity. And that's when your concentration is really strong. You notice that it's not just a question of stilling, stilling, stilling the mind, or forcing the mind down. You're bringing it to a state of balance through understanding. In addition to the, the effort to making it still, you also try to understand. Understand the breath, understand the pain understand the pleasure, understand the signals the body is giving you when, it, when it's letting you know that you need to breathe less and less and less. There's a lot to read here in the present moment, a lot to explore. As the Buddha said, getting the mind to settle down in a good state of absorption requires both tranquility and clear seeing or insight. The two of them go together, bringing the mind to a state of balance. And once the mind's in that state, then it can see things more clearly. It can go back and look at that pain again, see it more precisely even, if you want to. And you have lots of choices when the mind is in this state, once you've got it solid. But remember, your primary focus is the breath, it's the body, it's what gets you past the pain, it's what gets you past the pleasure. It's simply a matter of learning how to relate to these different sensations properly. Once you learn how to relate to them properly, the, the pain itself causes less, causes less and less suffering. The pleasure causes less and less delusion, because you've explored what you've got right here in the present moment. You begin to see the potential of a mind focused on the breath, what it can do for you. It's one of the amazing things about the practice. The breath doesn't cost anything. It's something you have with you all the time. It's the only meditation accessory that you really need. And it's the cheapest one there is. It's simply a question of getting to know it really well, getting to master it really well. So John Lee once said, the sign of real wisdom and discernment is your ability to take anything at all and squeeze as much use out of it. Not in the sense of forcing, but in the sense of 
really learning how to master it, seeing what it can do for you, not overlooking the things that are right here. Because after all, that's what the Buddha did. He focused on his breath. It took him all the way to awakening. What's the difference between his breath and your breath? The breath itself is the same. It's the clarity with which he was able to see things. The understanding, the discernment, the mindfulness and alertness that he brought to the breath. Those are things that we all have, too. It's simply a question of bringing them all together and keeping them together and seeing what you learn as a result. <coughs>